What's going on smart people? Today is the first day of the physics summer camp at NMSU. We're taking kids who are already interested in physics and we're going to be showing them cool lectures, demonstrations, activities, and challenges for the rest of the week. Right now it is getting close to 8 a.m. I have to go to campus so let's go meet up with the other mentors. So all the kids are going to be getting here soon? Yes! Alright, what's everybody's name? So these are all the mentors. We've got Esther. Esther. Not looking. Sean. Sean. Alex. Alex. Mariana, that's everybody. Yes, that's Mariana. it. There's no one else that we're missing. The whole family's here. And then we've got Joel. So the kids should be here pretty soon. We've got backpacks on the table where they're all going to sit. They're going to have their name tags. And then for the majority of the day, they're going to be learning about acoustics and waves and things like that. But more on that later. And so does that sound like longitudinal motion moving left and right as well as the propagation of the wave? Does that sound like they're both moving in the same direction? No. No. So this is not a longitudinal wave. So what if I go like this? We are a bit into the acoustics lab and the students now are trying to brainstorm and find out how you can make ultrasonic waves. So right now all of them are just talking with each other and we're going to see whose answers are the more realistic. So we also have this little scoreboard that's up here as each team's points. And we'll find out later what those points correspond to. Oh, we talked about breaking the sound barrier as Ella explained to us that it was a dome and that when something goes really fast it breaks the sound barrier. Sonic boom, yeah, yeah. We just introduced the challenge that all the students are going to be working on for the rest of the week, which is they're going to be building a rocket. So right now everyone's in brainstorming stages. Wow, that looks good. You guys think it's going to launch far? Uh, I hope. How high up do you think it'll get? A thousand feet. On a bad day. That was a good preliminary first run at rocket building. It was great. The kids loved it. It was great. And now it's lunchtime. We think time dynamic. Which it hurt my feelings a little bit that that was what they seemed the most excited for. Like I said, you can see the light and you can hopefully hear the sound. So you can still somewhat hear it a little bit, right? But not as loud. Can anybody venture to guess as to why? There's no air in there. Yes, but we can still kind of hear it in there. Yeah. Because traveling through the rest of it out of the base. Yeah, beautiful. That's right. It's something called resonance coupling. Put the air back in. And there it is. I want to bust the speaker. Day two. Today is day two of the physics summer camp. Mariana, what are we doing today? Chemistry. We're doing chemistry during physics su summer camp for some reason. Hey. Uh, all of us are a bunch of physics students except for Mariana, so she's the only one that really knows chemistry. So for us to be helpful, we're going to be cutting out like puzzle pieces and stuff for a game. Each day of the week, the students are going to be working on building rockets. Yesterday was more so prototyping and drawing out blueprints, potential plans. Today they're going to be working on them. Let's see what their strategies are. What's your guys' strategy for the rocket? Um, well, we have a cone, and then we have cardboard fins, and, and then we're going to protect our little eggie. <laughs> and we're going to use foam. What is the cone doing? It's going to be for aerodynamics, so the wind's going to I see. Is your guys' rocket coming? Good. Pretty good. What's the strategy? Yeah, I won't tell anyone else, I promise. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, right. Uh -huh. So basically, this is the warhead, so we're going to have the egg right in the middle. Okay. Right it here. So then we're going to cover it up, then place it right on top, oh. duct tape it, so that this is protected and this launches. We wanted to make it so that this would fall down early, but since the egg has been attached, it's just going to stay and fall together. Now we are going to the chemistry building to go play with fire and stuff. So you guys cannot set the fires, so one of the mentors will be helping you guys set fires. So Raise your hand if you don't need someone's help starting a fire. I told you everyone's fine. <laughs> so here, we've got some carbon dioxide that's illuminated. 
And then we have something that splits it into its spectrum, which you can see right there. Put that on there. Let's try. What is tetrahedral, octahedral, cubic? Everyone else will receive a light shock. Final round. You guys think about how many points you want to wager. Quiet! You guys having fun? <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> Everyone say bye and see you tomorrow. Today's all about accelerator physics, so today I'm going to be giving a lecture on how particle accelerators work. We have a lot of fun demos today. We've got this charge over mass apparatus at a certain point. Actually, you know what? Let's keep some stuff a surprise. The kids should be getting here within the next 15 or 20 minutes, and then we'll get started with the day. All metals aren't necessarily magnets, but all metals can be turned into them by that equation that I just showed you that's called Ampere-Maxwell equation. Now this idea of using electricity and magnetism comes, it's really the, the working horse of what makes accelerators work. We want to accelerate particles in some way, and we want to make sure we can control the direction. You guys know that the Ampere here is a YouTube sign? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I already told you that. What I have here, and I need a volunteer, it's mostly black there, but there's little tiny slits in it. You see that? So that's a laser. If I just let it go through, I'm letting it go through this little hole in this mount here. And now what I'm going to do is put one of those slits. So now the laser is going through one of those slits, okay? And it produces this pattern. So I do that, and if I know the wavelength of the light, I can tell you exactly how wide that little, the little slit is. Okay, so right now we are having everybody create some of their very own electromagnets. I might have mentioned this before in the video, but not all metals are magnets. But all metals, all metals can be turned into magnets by running a current through them. So we have some insulated wire, probably uninsulated would be better. Don't blame the theorist. Um, and then we have a battery to connect at both ends to complete the circuit. And when you complete the circuit, it turns this ordinary nail into an electromagnet. And then we're going to have all of these students face off to see who's built the best one. So we've got a bunch of paper clips that they can use. I forgot to pass out the paper clips. And we're going to see who's can pick up the most. We got two winners for the electromagnets, so they're getting an extra 30 points on their rocket that they're going to build. So if they build a terrible rocket, they still get a plus 30 points. Okay, now we're going to finish up with accelerator physics jeopardy. Day four. I forgot to turn on the microphone for the end of yesterday's video, but we finished up the day the same as all the other days where we did jeopardy on the topics that they learned about. So yesterday we had accelerator physics jeopardy, which was fun. Um, today we're going to give them a bit of a break from all of the mind-bending physics, because yesterday we talked about things like special relativity, length contraction, time dilation, quantum mechanics. We don't want to overwhelm them today. So today we're talking about the physics of superheroes. Basically, some of the mentors are going to prepare some lectures on if we had to describe the powers of certain superheroes using physics, how could we do it? But I'm going to go downstairs and meet up with the other, oh my god, with the other mentors, and we're going to get started for the day. This suit <laughs> yeah. can, uh, transfer energy <laughs> and take energy oh. in, right? Yeah. Do the bullets ricochet? No. They ricochet off of some things, but Captain America's shield and Black Panther's armor are made out of the same thing, vibranium. Does anyone remember what they said in the movie Vibranium did? Absorbs vibrations, but how much of the vibration? Nearly all. Nearly all. Getting into the final activity of the day, all of the students are creating their own superheroes. And at the end, they're going to have to explain the physics of how their superhero works. So here, we've got um, 
We've got, su we've got super stick figure. And then we've got Michelin Man on a treadmill. I'm excited to hear all the physical explanations, and then we're going to judge him. He has, he's like a normal guy, but then he gets uh, diagnosed with like, stage 4 inoperable cancer. <laughs> and so he has like, like So then he hears about like uh, secret fruit in the jungle in Africa. And then he goes there. And then on his way there, uh, he gets stuck in a bear trap, so he loses his feet. And then when he finally finds the feet, there's bears that, that eat his hands. <laughs> um, his main power is reflection. So, kind of. You punch him, it's gonna reflect all the energy back at you. Um, the whole reason that actually happens is because he's born with an extra layer of uh, membrane around his cells, which can absorb the energy and reverberate it back out. We are now getting into the final game of Jeopardy on superhero physics and such. It's the final round. I don't know if I'm gonna record anymore. We've been doing this point system for the entire week for all of the teams in the summer camp. And tomorrow, which is the last day of the camp, people are going to be doing a water balloon fight. So the winner was Ravenclaw, so we're giving them an unfair advantage tomorrow for the water balloon fight, and they all have super soakers to use. <laughs> Basically, everyone's going to get wrecked. Tomorrow. Today is the last day of the summer camp, and for the end of the day, the kids are going to have a big old water balloon fight. So now we're just going to go fill up all the water balloons. We got all of the balloons in there. Is it heavy? It, it looks is. heavy. It's, yeah, it's, it's heavy. heavy. Believe me, I'd help it's if heavy, I could. Austin, Today we're going to have lectures on astronomy, but in the meantime we're going to be doing some physics 20 questions. She's, uh, she comes today to talk a little bit about black holes and gravitational waves. And she has been working with basically high energy particles and what is happening around black holes. So feel free to ask her as many questions you want. So Kids are playing and learning about telescopes. Apparently there's something down there. I doubt I will actually be able to see anything. Oh wow. Holy crap, you can actually read it. I'm gonna show you what that telescope actually saw. So we're walking. It was able to read this sign from all the way down there. Everyone's done looking at telescopes, now everyone's gonna get a chance to battle their rockets that they made against one another. So the objective is they have a little egg that's inside of the rocket and it has to survive the fall. They're gonna be graded by how high up it goes and probably other things. How far it goes. And how far it goes. I don't know yes. if we're bringing how far it goes, but we are definitely gonna show them how to calculate how high it goes. And I think it's based off of the number of cracks the egg gets, right, too? Points. Cracks and they get 80 points. Oh. oh, they get more points if it cracks. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> Sounds like the opposite of what we want. But yeah, it's rocket time. Even managed to snag Krishna. He wanted to see the rockets get launched yeah. into space. I'm excited. All right, so whose rocket is going to win? None of them. None of them? None of them? They're all going to go into the trees. Zoom out. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, oh. oh, that was bad. Well, that was fun. Was a good successful launch? What's the verdict, Sean? 29 feet. 29 feet. All right, we're doing another one. Here we go. Oh! Here we go. That one, that one I think definitely went the farthest. Got some good news? Yeah. Our what is egg it? lived. It lived. <laughs> it was all it went all the way five feet. down by the flag practically, and it lived. Yeah. Yeah. So you're supposedly your egg lived. Let's let's analyze it real quick. There's supposed to be. What is that? Oh, that's it's a little green. Yeah. That's foam. Okay. Woo! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Almost got died. So, we're about to get started with the water balloon fight. Before we 
get into it though. I figured it'd be fun to have a quick little lecture on like fluid dynamics. <laughs> Kids are so mean. All they wanted to do was talk about physics. Oh, oh my god. Boom oh, shot! Oh my god. The places I put myself for the shot. How'd the water balloon fight go? Everyone get wet? Yeah! Awesome. Alright, that's a wrap for that. Now we're gonna take a final picture and say our goodbyes. Everybody! Can we give Mariana a big thank you for basically putting this whole thing together for us? Thank you! Thanks, Mariana! I appreciate it! We're gonna be wrapping the video up. I just wanna say I'm glad you guys all came this week. Did everybody have fun? Yeah! Alright, everyone say goodbye to the camera and you'll see yourselves Bye, on YouTube. Yeah. Now, I don't mean to get all sentimental, guys, but please subscribe. Smash that bell button. <laughs> all right. Bye. <laughs>